Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Wednesday, October 5th, 2016. Uh, I think it's time to do another update on the marijuana stocks, the cannabis sector. Um, that is where, you know, if, uh, we've had a tremendous amount of uh, huge profits in some of these trades. Um, for those of you not familiar with this, I, there's quite a few of the videos um, and, and posts, but if you're a, a silver member or a gold member of the site and you don't frequent the trading room often, um, the vast majority of updates that I post on these um, trades, uh, so some setups, objective entries, levels to take profits, those are all done in the trading room, or I should say most of those. But um, with that being said, I, I think it's time to do an update on the video. I've made some comments in the, uh, in the trading room as well as the front page that uh, – in the last uh, week or so, particularly yesterday, I've, I've become aggressively uh, booking profits on a lot of these names. Uh, just think it's time, you know, for my read on the charts, um, my experience trading these momentum sectors like this, these stocks with, you know, a lot of these I'm sure have questionable fundamentals. There are some some favorites that I have in the sector, you know, even, a, uh, you know, an official long-term trade idea on that uh, ACBFF, which had some good news today. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, uh, point for this, the, the main point for doing this video now is, uh, as I've said in the trading room and on the front page, I'm more concerned at this point about reeling in uh, some, some gains on a lot of these positions and uh, we'll certainly look for, you know, an objective entry to add back exposure to the sector. But uh, for the most part, other than some core positions and long-term accounts, um, you know, as well as that ACBFF, which is a long-term trade idea. And that's, you know, been my biggest position in the, in the marijuana stocks. You know, I made a fundamental case for that one. Other than that, uh, I've, I've reduced quite a bit of exposure and only have token amounts right now. And, and these, and, and again, those are, um, those are the ones that I plan on leaving as core long-term positions, unless the, uh, the fundamentals, or I should say the technicals clearly say, all right, time to get out. Um, but at this point, I've booked enough gains that um, even if I'm stopped out on the remaining long-term positions, uh, they're still uh, impossible to lose money at this point. Um, so I'll go through these in no particular order. I just have these some of these flagged. These are the ones I've covered in the past. So here's EDXCC. And, and what I want to get to here, the reason I'm doing this video, there's a common theme. It's not just pure gut instinct that says, okay, now is the time to get out. You know, I mentioned yesterday why everything was roaring. They, the fact, they all, on average, my watch list had the best day yet. And to me, um, you know, where others might say, well, gosh, the momentum's really just getting going. It seemed more of a buying crescendo or a buying climax yesterday. Um, at, at least near term. And more importantly, other than the fact that that was my read on it, and I've stated this very often in the past, uh, for those who have watched the videos or read my analysis, when I'm trading a certain sector with a high correlation of the components, such as GDX, in other words, I uh, guarantee you yesterday that every component of GDX, maybe with one or two exceptions, but probably not, was down. And when GDX is up big, they all go up. In other words, that the mining stocks tend to move uh, in, in tight synchronicity to one another. And, and you're getting that too right now with the, um, the marijuana stocks, the cannabis stocks. And so what that means is the ones with the good fundamentals should have been rallying. Maybe it was a legitimate rally, but the rest were catching what I call sympathy bids and with just the momentum traders playing in the sector. All right, so uh, now where I'm trying to tie this in here, is other than the fact that my read was, okay, that's uh, maybe a buying uh, climax or at least a near-term buying climax yesterday, is the fact that the uh, uh, we have so many of these stocks hitting uh, the price targets or resistance levels that I've pointed out in, in, the, uh, in the past, going back for weeks or even months now on these. So uh, that in itself is a reason when I'm trading a sector, whether it's the shippers, the miners, anywhere they move in high correlation together, when I start seeing a, a good deal of the stocks on my watch list or the ones that I personally own, all hitting price targets around the same time after a pretty good advance, even if the technicals look strong, that tells me time to, to at least take some off the table, if not book full profits. And that's the that's what we'll look at here on the video. Now, some of these still look okay. Some have just recently broken out. So there may be, there could certainly be some more, uh, there may be more momentum. These are just, you know, some of the earlier price targets that I have. Longer term, there's there's quite a few uh, additional price targets. And, uh, you know, I've already made the case, uh, the longer term fundamental bullish case for 
marijuana and cannabis stocks. And, um, and as I've said, a lot of these aren't uh, just pure growers or distributors. They have, there's all kinds of a, a mixed bag of companies in my watch list. This is the watch list I've talked about and, and shared before. And I've actually added a few names since, thanks to members on the site that have passed along some names. So, all right, uh, let's just dive into the charts and we'll go through quickly. EX, EDXC, Index Corp. Uh, as I said, what I love about this sector is these stocks behave so well to the technicals. You have, in this case, a breakout, a back test, and then a move up. And from the point either of the breakout or the back test, I'll just grab a rough number right here, drag up, and you can see. And again, there's not I don't think there's a single target on any of these charts uh, that I'm covering now that was added in hindsight. These were all identified well in advance, and you can see how well so many of these stops, like the stocks, like this one, stopped cold. There's about a 33, 34% gain, blasted right through the first price target, hit that second target, and has pulled back. You know, it's down about 8% today. GRNH, this was one of my favorites. Again, uh, you know, if you just have to watch the other videos and, and, and you will see the reasoning for the entries. These were all mentioned ahead of time before they even broke out. But just beautiful technical analysis at its finest. Breakout, back test. I mean, to the pennies here on a lot of these, uh, or fractions, I should say, hundreds of a cent in, in a case of a, a stock only trading at five cents a share. And after that back test, it just exploded. So, you know, you could have, uh, this one I had stated originally, an entry would be a break over the $5 level since it was so close, or I'm sorry, the five cent level. It gets, it's tough to uh, try to remember you're talking stocks are only in penny shares. And so it ran up and did what I call a momentum overshoot of this target here. That And I pointed that out in the trading room when it was hit, 0 0.07, 7.82 cents a share. And that was a 57% gain. It overshot it a little bit, 63%. Very common. I refer to these as momentum-fueled overshoots when you have a, you know, a, a near vertical rip with high volume. You tend to overshoot. Uh, those levels. So there were a couple that I took profits on yesterday or earlier this week that were actually in no man's land. In other words, they overshot. I think I'll get to those in a second. Like CANN is one that comes to mind. And I think this next one here, yeah, MJNA. Um, this one, you can see a momentum overshoot of that 7.47 cent level. And again, just a tremendous uh, yeah, price action as far as, uh, you know, trading to the technicals you have these downtrend lines these explosive rips downtrend line you know support well-defined support right there uh, a rip and this other rip so this was our most recent entry right there you know break of that downtrend line and this one shot up you know that's 71 percent and we're talking just a couple weeks but you can see what happened that was a momentum fueled overshoot and the stock came right back and again look where look where that pullback see the bottom of this candlestick that red candlestick right there perfect to that that level and again this these were levels identified in advance and um that's where the buyers stepped in so you could have game to bounce now i'm not trying to game bounce as i'm just going to step aside let the dust settle for a little while and then i'll look for another entry here this was another one of my favorites uh c-a-n-n um you know just a tremendous run since that breakout 280 percent gain in just a few weeks and again, even taking a very small position size, which I did and which I highly uh, suggest for anybody to do, um, you know, don't, don't, you, you really can't even take more than, you know, you try to drop 50,000, 100 grand on one of these stocks, you're going to move it. Uh, they're usually too thin. You can play around with them with bigger share, bigger purchase prices when the volume is there. But um, other than that, you don't need to put a lot, you know even a few hundred dollars a few thousand dollars in these you know when you make a two three hundred percent return that's that's comparable to gains on on much larger trades that you're only shooting eight ten fifteen percent gains on so there there it is uh, this one blew past that two dollar that was my final target and uh, if i should say final near-term target i still have a target up here which i you know think over time it can hit but uh, this one certainly it just shot right up in the middle there and that's i believe on this one that's where i took profit yesterday and pointed that out in the trading room again, uh, saying it was in no man's land between support and resistance. But again, uh, I don't think it, it, I just, anything's possible. I just don't see it going there uh, without a pullback first, at least to come in and back test this $2 level. And if they all start to come back in and seem to stabilize on, on, on the same, you know, comparable support levels around the same time, 
um, then maybe they'll provide a, a, another long side entry. But right now, I'd prefer to let the dust settle. And, you know, if these guys walk away and go up another two, three hundred percent, um, you know, other than the small positions I have, you just can't look back. You can only trade these things one of two ways. You either take profits where you think you want to. Some traders like to trail stops. You trail stops on these, you're going to get clipped out on these little pullbacks here because, you know, that pullback measured alone about 25 percent. So, you know, where are you going to put your stop? So that's why I prefer to sell into strength, not weakness. Uh, CVSI. Uh, this one I like too. And see, this is one that just broke out and, and looks like it has some room to go. Uh, since the breakout level right about this point, I can't touch it here. If I do that, I grab that trend line and I move it. So I'm just taking, if you look at the crosshairs, that horizontal line catches about the level it broke out around three cents. And, you know, so far it hit that, uh, it ran up about 40% in just, uh, you know, less than two weeks. And you can see right there at that, that price target, I have a level right there at uh, about 39 cents. And you can see that's where that thing is pinned to. It's trading at 39 cents right now. This is that uh, horizontal resistance line or target. I don't have the numbers put up on all of them. I have to just click that and say show value. But you can see it all there. Edit show value. That's, that's 40 cents. So it's trading at 39 now after overshooting. Okay, C-Grow, C-G-R-O, Canagrow, I should say. Um, just, again, beautiful chart. Uh, we were waiting for this one to break out this downtrend line. I mentioned that it had some horizontal resistance above there. If you look closely, you see it went up there, kind of stalled around, and then exploded from there to hit my uh, final target. Now, final near-term target, as I mentioned, at $1 level, just like on that ACBFF, my favorite. We that's a big level. Once you get above a one dollar share price, you, you the stock, if it can hold above there for a period of time, starts to get picked up on other radar scanners. Um, you can can move up and be listed, get off the bulletin board or pink sheets, and and, and get listed on an exchange like the ACBFF just did today on the TSX Venture Exchange. Um, but either way, you know percentage wise, don't underestimate. You look at these charts; they might like might not look like much but there's a 47 percent gain in just a couple weeks ammj another one like i said these are you know, kind of like my children you gotta love them all you you know <laughs> you can't pick a like i say i might have a couple favorites and that's just if i look at the fundamental i do a little due diligence and i see a fundamental story there with it and it aligns with the charts those are the ones i don't mind tucking away for longer term uh as i mentioned some of these they probably have questionable business models are just catching a bid in sympathy with the rest of the sector. But there's AMMJ, phenomenal, 333% run since the breakout. And I pointed this one out as these dual intersecting downtrend lines. Took those out, and in just a few weeks, you know, 333%. And now, and you can see it's pulled back. This is a, a target level that I had here at 33 cents. It overshot that. Got right about in the middle in between uh, that uh, target and the next one and stalled and came back in. So that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing profit taking. And, uh, you know, the momentum traders, they're like roaches when the lights come on. They tend to scatter. And uh, and I said it before uh, this even this, these pullbacks started. You don't want to be the last one at the party uh, when the lights go out. Um, that's why I like to sell into strength here. Uh, but, again, longer term, these all look good. And that's why I'm doing this video. And I'll keep updates going and... Um, you know, whether we buy them on a pullback or we buy them on the next breakout. For, for example, CBDS, Cannabis Sativa, uh, Sativa is, you know, pushing right now. You can see very well-defined resistance zones. See this reaction back here. You have a reaction back here. Uh, you have reactions here. And you have this long-term downtrend line that probably goes back to the left of this chart you know, a little bit. And... Um, so that would be a bullish technical event because, as you guys know, some of my favorite breakouts come on breaks of dual intersecting support or resistance levels. In this case, you have two resistance levels, a down primary downtrend line and a well-defined horizontal uh, resistance level. But with that being said, the stock, you know, it's pretty... It's run up quite a bit to get there. It's a little, a little extended, and again, more importantly, uh, there, there may be some, some more profit taking to come in the sector in the near term here. And here's CBIS, again, just a beautiful example of technical analysis. Each of these downtrend lines, you can see the, what's happened when they broke out. This one was pointed out down here before the breakout. Uh, prices broke out, 
back tested for a day or two and then off to the races and that one was good for from you know up to the peak about 64 percent in just a few days and these were targets i had now it's nice to see from a longer term perspective if it can hold it there's a downtrend line right here and it and cbis managed to punch above and so far back tested that downtrend line and it's held um, so that, that was the, the next target there around 2.54 cents a share. I always set my sell limit orders just shy of the actual resistance. So keep that in mind. Um, so that could have got you out a little ahead of time. And if, and when it takes that level out there, I should add, there's one resistance level and one stop along the way I see right about, uh, 3.37 cents a share, but ultimately that one could work its way up to about 4.8 cents a share. Vape, this was pointed out by a member on the site recently down here, broke out, just broke out, but it's come back into back test. I had a level right here at uh, 4 or 0 0.46 cents a share. And uh, those are the levels there. So uh, again, I wouldn't be chasing that one or, or really any of these right here right now. Uh, CCAN, uh, hasn't really taken off yet. Volume's coming into it. And that's a common theme. I didn't mention it on the other ones, but I have in the past, not in this video today, I haven't mentioned it, but you can see a lot of volume coming into the stock. So these, you know, this is a sector with interest. And, um, you know, some of these stocks may turn out to be long-term winners. This is, again, this was my favorite. This was an official trade idea, still is. Uh, we had two swing trades on this to the tune of about 40 or 50 percent on each swing trade. Quick gains, just a couple weeks, and the timing couldn't have been better. We took it long in this bullish pennant breakout. We sold right here, right at the highs before it reversed, and then we bought back in, you know, within you know, not just pennies. We're talking within hundreds of a hundreds of a cent, or you know, mere basis points of the lows. Pretty much right at the lows. Recycled back in. Swung it back up to 94 cents from there. Booked profits on, and those were swing trades. Remember, there are different types. There's swing trades on the site, which are intended to be held for days, weeks, sometimes months, and then long-term trades. ACBFF and their and the counterparts that trade on the other exchanges uh, are are what I categorize are on the site as a, it's on the site as a long-term trade, which is really an investment. And uh, you know, I'm. Right now, I put a just a rough target out there around three dollars. So we'll revisit that. And whether it takes it, you know, three months or three years to get there, even if it does from from a dollar thirty six where it is today up to three dollars, that's still uh, almost certainly will almost certainly outperform the market or just about any other stock. So again, this one I made the fundamental case for as well as the technical case. And now that it's uh, solidly above that one dollar level and has um, Peng Blood in the trading room pointed out yesterday this one has been uh, their application to be listed on the Toronto Venture Exchange was approved yesterday and that's a big plus for the stock it puts it on uh, you know it gives it a little more credibility and visibility uh, so uh, longer term this one still looks good it's up nice today despite the rest of the sector a lot of the other stocks I should say taking profits uh, seeing profit taken, this one's still up 18%, and that's probably largely due to the fact it is now on the TSX Venture Exchange. TRTC, uh, just kind of sloppy. I don't have anything. There's th These are levels, but not one of my favorite. SGBY, mentioned by uh, someone else in the trading room. Again, thanks a lot, guys. I really appreciate it. Keep these coming. Um, you know, we're we're in these together. Um, so if anything you see, pass it along and I'll give you my opinion, right or wrong on them. And, and you do the same, you know, especially if you have a, a little fundamental backdrop, something you've read on the stocks or heard, uh, let me know and we'll look into it. And that's what the trading room's all about. So again, most of these have been shared in the trading room and they're not official trade ideas because of the low price, the very volatile speculative nature. Uh, you gotta be very quick with these. Uh, if you're, you know, coming home from work and reading, listening to this video tonight or, you know, a couple days from now as I'm recording it, uh, by the time you hear, okay, it's time to take profit, or time to get in this one, it's too late. These things move quick. These are in and out. You're talking gains and double and even triple digits in just days. Um, and you have to be, uh, you know, give it a little more time and be a little quick with these, um, these trades, both on the entries and the exits. So... Uh, that's this one looks good. It needs a takeout. You can see, look at the volume come into this thing, tremendous. And there's a fundamental story here on this one. Uh, looks like they have a, uh, you know, oh gosh, what I think they might have a. 
I'm trying to recall. Um, there, there is a, a, a you know a fundamental story bes- behind this one that sounds pretty compelling, and you can see a lot of volume coming into this one, and uh, it needs to take out that recent reaction high. That would be the next bullish technical event. It has taken out that two cent level that I talked about before. We had this momentum overshoot, came back down. As soon as this one was pointed out to me, I put up a chart when it was up here, stay, you know, showing these two support levels. It kissed that one and exploded up. And since then, just since that level, and I missed this one. Unfortunately, I wish I would have got this one 256% since it kissed that support level that I put up ahead of time. I uh, can't catch them all, but uh, I'm sure caught a lot of these. and It's been nice. Full, F-U-L-L, full circle capital. Again, this one. As I mentioned, they're not all pure plays. This is a, uh, they do financing. It's a financial company that probably finance a lot of these startup ventures and the cannabis stocks. Uh, just look at it. Tap, 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 tap. It's tapping against that 274 level. Broke above it once, shot way up here. So if and when it does that, that would be my first target, that $3 level, and it could continue on. So Kara, uh, this has been... This was one, and I put it up. Yeah, I even put this one up on the front page. I put it up in the trading room several times. It said that I was considering adding it as an official trade because this is a, a biotech company. It's not a pure play. In fact, they have one of their one of their painkiller uh, pain meds that they have in clinical trials. I already mentioned this was a you know based on a marijuana based painkiller where they the rest are opiate based, but. Uh, this one has been just phenomenal. Um, you know, it, it, it phenomenal, not just in the profits we've had. Um, I mean, personally, I put these trades all up in the trading room in advance. And let's just take a look at what we've done with this one. We had, uh, initially, I put it up here under this basing pattern. Uh, let's see. And highlighted this this nice base and that it would be a, a long entry on a break above, which it did. Broke out. Even came back in that day after the breakout. I even mentioned it was up a little bit that you could buy it on a back test, and it gave, gave us a back test. So we had two entries. You had an, a chance to enter on the breakout and on the back test, uh, both posted in advance in the trading room. That trade alone, uh, I had these targets here, and yeah, I tracked this one all along and stated my intention to hold out, and I, I, I closed out profits right there that first target was at 888 the stock went to 890 that day and then dropped back from there immediately upon hitting that target fell back about almost 13 percent uh so we nailed the exit within two cents for a a gain of you know what was that from that level there to up there about 32 percent uh yeah almost 33 percent Turned around, bought the stock back on the pullback, and uh, I have a chart here somewhere. Let's see, right here, pointed this out in the trading room. Also mentioned going long there right before this chart went up, and I followed up with this chart. Uh, I like that because that was a pullback to intersecting support. It's 790. You had this uptrend line as well as the horizontal line. There was that uh, flag pattern broke out. Uh, From there, uh, the stock went on. Uh, this is the whole story, I guess, on there. That was our first swing entry. We exited, went long there. I showed you the 60-minute chart. And uh, let's see, this was the updated 60-minute chart I posted in the trading room today. Now, I just took profits. I took them a little bit early today only because everything I just said. Now, this one, again, isn't a pure play in the marijuana sector, um, but uh, it is on the daily chart. We'll take a look at it in a second. Um Either way, that that trade was uh, good for that second trade. Remember, these are recycling, wash, rinse, repeat. You know, you break out, you take a a stock, sell it when it hits your target, and if it comes back into a well-defined support level and the the longer-term chart still looks good, which this one very much does, then you can go long back on a pullback to support, which happened to be, not coincidentally, my first target level. That was set a little bit below that, and that stock exploded back up. And uh, let's get let's look at the live chart now. So it's up today another you know 13%. Here's that 60-minute chart. There's the board. There was where we bought it back in. So that was there there at around 790. And uh, if I can capture, well 792, close enough. So that one from that point just uh, what a week or so ago is already up another 25%. So there's two swing trades. And again, these are posted in the trading room. Um, easiest way to follow those is if you use the sorting f- uh, filter. 
Uh, you can you can sort any post in the trading room by certain members. So if you are following me, if you want to follow these posts, just go in there, click follow under um, you know my my username, and then you can sort. If you, even if you're not a very active trader, you can come in from time to time and sort all the posts and see all these unofficial trade ideas that I'm putting up. All right, a couple more, and we'll wrap this up. Arrow. A E R O. This one I posted. It was you know not to chase here, but we also I had posted this one months earlier, earlier this year back here, and even had some in a long term account that uh, this was a very big level, that roughly five dollar level, and so I was able to exit there. And you can see that stock it will probably need to work up here. It's a uh, work off these overbought conditions before it can take that level out. It's about 483, 485. And that's a pretty significant resistance level. So this one's had a heck of a run off the lows. So from the beginning of the year, that stock, you know, from bottom to peak gained, you know, 570%. So again, the gains in these are nothing short of explosive. And my point being that I think over the, in the coming years and months, there'll be additional opportunities in the sector. And um, the way to, to, most effectively uh, manage risk in this sector um, other than of course stop loss orders is to spread it out you never know which ones are going to go up to 300 percent which ones will only go up 20 or 30 or which ones won't pan out at all and that's why i take this shotgun approach and sprinkle money into all of these uh, patterns that look good and uh, here's uh, cnab united cannabis again this this long errant candlestick here kind of throws a chart but i posted it as a breakout on this downtrend line you can see it broke out from there and ran up 143 percent or so but it's coming back in there's a common theme a lot of these stocks you see them giving back some profits so uh this one i didn't i don't know if i covered it it's been on my list for a while attbff attbf i'm sorry and uh i don't know i had a downtrend line on this one before you can clearly see it there. It took out that downtrend line, and this thing's just been a monster, you know, 370% in just a couple of weeks. And look at, again, look at uh, the technicals, how well they work. Uh, if you notice, this is a bull flag right there in the middle. Bull flag's a continuation pattern. So you have a flagpole uh, from here to here, that sharp move up, and then a breakout of the bull flag pattern. And um, that's just another example how well these things behave to technical analysis. MCI, MCIG, downtrend line breakout, same story, profit taking going on right now. That one ran about a 45% or so. And I think we'll leave it there. You can just, you, know, you can see my watch list if you want to take a screenshot, see some of the stocks I follow. I had um, uh, flagged the ones that I'm trading and I'm following and I've covered in the video in the past. This is another one, another member on the site just shared. Uh, the other day, uh, he shared one of the, the Canadian ticker, uh, and this is actually you can also buy it over the counter uh, here in the on the U.S. in the U.S. markets. TWMJF, and uh, what I noted on this one stood out to me as this bearish. Uh, I'm sorry, bullish pennant pattern. This is just the the projection. You have a flagpole, the bullish pennant, and which is a continuation pattern, and that's what that would project to. Um, now, I wouldn't personally. I'm, I'm not taking this one at this time because of everything I just said. I think the the sector may do be due for a little bit more profit taking. Uh, there's also some pretty sharp divergence there, so this this flag may or may not play out to its full extent, but I, I wouldn't chase it at this point. And uh, these are some of the other ones that I have in here. There's a nice downtrend line on that one, but a lot of these that I don't have marked are thin volume. This one was also shared uh, within the trading room today. P-H-O-T. I'd have to mark the chart up. I just added it to my watch list today. And then E-R-B-B. -B, very thinly traded when you see these funky candles. But even with that, they're still trading them. They're taking these breakouts. This one had this, this uh, descending price channel. Downtrend line there. Popped from there. Ran up about 100%. Pulled back. And it's back testing that primary downtrend line. So... All right, guys, uh, I'll wrap it up here, and uh, I'll keep an eye on the sector and uh, look out for the ne next objective entry. And um, and if, if those of you that have tucked any of these away for, uh, as long-term holds, long-term trades, uh, feel free to uh, you know request uh, an opinion in the trading room, and I'll be glad to uh, post a, a chart with some levels 
in my opinion, on the stock. All right, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart.